I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make these Japanese fish shaped pastries or taiyaki. They're a traditional sweet treat and don't worry, they don't actually contain any fish. Like most traditional foods, it's unclear who first created this sweet treat, but it's thought to have evolved from a flat cookie called mojiyaki, which were molded into different shapes, including fish and turtles. In 1909, Naniwaya Sohonten in Tokyo started selling the first modern taiyaki by encasing a core of sweet red bean paste with batter using a three dimensional iron mold. For my version, I use a mixture of mochi rice flour with cake flour to produce a taiyaki that's light and crispy on the outside and tender with just a bit of chew on the inside. A bit of melted butter and vanilla extract keeps the taiyaki moist, adding loads of flavor that goes brilliantly with the anko in the center. Sound good? Let's start with a look at our ingredients. I'm using 75 grams of cake flour, 25 grams of mochi flour or shiratamako, a quarter teaspoon baking powder, a quarter teaspoon baking soda, a half cup milk, two tablespoons of cultured butter, one tablespoon of honey, and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm also using 120 grams of anko or sweet red bean paste to stuff the taiyaki and two teaspoons of vegetable oil to grease the pan. The first thing I'm gonna do is wad up a paper towel into a tight ball and soak it in the vegetable oil. It's important to do this first so the oil has a chance to soak into the paper towel evenly. To make the batter, I'm gonna set a strainer over a bowl and add the cake flour, rice flour, baking powder, and baking soda. Then I'm gonna sift these while mixing them together. In case you're wondering why we need to add extra baking soda when baking powder already includes it, it's because we want to shift the pH of the batter from neutral to alkaline so we can get some nice browning on the outside of our taiyaki. For the wet ingredients, add the milk, butter, and honey to a bowl. And then I'm going to microwave this for 50 seconds at 600 watts to melt the butter. By the way, you can do this on the stove if you don't have a microwave oven. You don't want to boil this mixture, so once the butter is mostly melted, add the vanilla extract and whisk the mixture together until the butter is fully melted. Then I'm going to dump the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and whisk this together until we have a smooth batter. Because we're using cake flour and rice flour, there's not much gluten in this, so you don't need to worry about overmixing it and it's more important that the batter is free of lumps. Okay, this is looking good, so let's make our taiyaki. As you might have guessed, you're gonna need a special mold to shape the taiyaki. I've tried a few different molds, and this one is hands down my favorite. That's why I've partnered up with Bento & Co to offer a curated collection of the Japanese kitchen tools that I actually use in my kitchen. So hit the link in the description down below and use coupon code NORECIPES to get 10% off your order. We need to preheat our taiyaki mold, so I'm going to turn the heat on and adjust it down as low as it'll go without turning off. Then I'm going to let this heat on one side until the bottom gets to about 140 degrees Celsius or 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm going to open up the mold and use our oil-soaked paper towel to grease it. You want to apply a thin, even coating of oil, but there shouldn't be any visible bubbles of oil on the surface of the pan or your taiyaki won't brown evenly. Now I'm going to pour about a tablespoon of batter into the left and right molds. Next I'm going to use a heat resistant brush to gently spread the batter around in an even layer making sure to get into all the nooks and crannies of the mold. Feel free to dip the brush in the bowl of batter if you have any gaps. Once the batter is mostly set, rotate the pan so the top half of the mold is over the heat. 
Then I'm going to repeat the process by adding a tablespoon of batter into each side of the mold. And then I'm going to use a brush to spread it around. Next, I'm going to scoop a generous spoonful of the ankle into the center of the batter. I have a really easy recipe for making ankle from scratch, and I'll include a link to the video in the description down below. Use your spoon to flatten off the top, and be sure to leave a margin around the anko so it doesn't leak out the sides of our taiyaki. To bind the two halves together, I'm going to pour a tablespoon of batter over the anko. Then you want to use a brush to spread the batter right up to the edges. Don't worry if you spread it outside the lines though, because this is going to create crispy wings of batter that's a prized part of taiyaki. Now I'm going to shut the lid and lock the handle shut to keep the rising batter from opening the mold. Once it's locked, flip the mold over and let this cook for 2 minutes. Then you want to flip it back over and let it cook on this side for another 2 minutes. Okay, moment of truth. Let's open it up and see how it looks. Beautiful, aren't they? It smells like butter and vanilla and caramelized honey. Let's try this out. Itadakimasu! Alright, look at that. Oh, it's still crispy. You got the little wings of crispy dough on the outside. I'm gonna start from the tail. Mmm. All right, let's try the head. Mmm, it's super crispy on the outside like a good waffle cone. And on the inside, you've got this cakey texture with just a little bit of chew from that mochi. And the combination of that sweet umami from the red bean paste goes super well with that buttery umami coming from the batter. Mmm. These are super delicious and satisfying, and they're a ton of fun to make, so I hope you'll give them a try. Well, I'm gonna go brew myself a pot of tea and have another one of these. But check out this playlist for more delicious Japanese sweets, and I'll catch you in the next one.